Welcome back to Black News Tonight. I am uh, continuing my conversation with Dr. Kamika Royal. She is Associate Professor of Urban Education at Loyola University in Maryland. And we've been talking about racial fatigue in school, but now I wanna kind of pivot a little bit and talk about this question around critical race theory. As you know, there's been such a push uh, by red states and even some conservatives in blue states to ban critical race theory from school, to stop it from K-12 education. Uh, and I, I want you to watch a clip, and, and hopefully we can pull this up, uh, from a conversation that I had just uh, maybe two days ago with a gentleman, uh, who Christopher Rufo, who is one of the real central figures trying to fight critical race theory and the scourge of critical race theory in American education and, and, and uh, government. Uh, two weeks ago, before that, I had uh, Vernon Jones uh, on. Uh, I, I, he's uh, actually an alum maybe of, of, of your undergrad institution. Uh, and he is. He was. <laughs> and he, he, <laughs> he, he, he was attempting to explain what critical race theory was, but couldn't quite write was he? Get them words out of his mouth. That's what he said he was trying to do, Dr. Royal. So between him coming on here saying that and then this interesting conversation I had with Christopher Rufo, who's actually was somewhat thoughtful um, and had a lot to say and knew what critical race theory was, at least, and could articulate it, uh, we had this exchange. The idea of whiteness, I mean, it's a, it's a pejorative label. Do you identify as white? I'm an Italian-American, so you tell me. You say, what do you have in common with a Swede or with, say, a, Pol a Polish person or whatever? That thing would be whiteness. When you're driving down the street and a police officer sees you or they see me, that, that your ethnicity isn't the point. It, your race is. You can pretend you're not white. I'm not saying you're doing that, but the world still treats you as white. And if I were to say to you right now, Christopher, what do you like about being white? What would you say? <laughs> I don't know. I, again, it's such an amorphous term. It's like a census term. Particularly if you're saying whiteness is a thing that is being constructed as negative and shouldn't be, name, name something positive that you, you like about being white. I don't buy into the framework that the world can be reduced into these metaphysical categories of whiteness and blackness. Now, I, I want to pause and say that I, we had, I, 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 uh, I initially had uh, C.J. Pearson, and I, we announced at the beginning of the show, a young black conservative and also the campaign manager for Vernon Jones to come on tonight to um, explain the position, to push back per his request. Uh, and he has gone MIA. He didn't show up. He hasn't called. He's disappeared. We've been ghosted by a black conservative. I don't know how I'll pick up the pieces of my life and find a way to move on, Dr. Royal. But fortunately, I have you who's educated and actually knows the answers to these questions. So why does whiteness and the conversation around whiteness prompt the kind of responses we just saw? Well, um, why? Because it benefits them to not ascribe, to, to not believe that there are certain benefits um, people receive because they are white. Um, one of our colleagues, Dr. Sabini Anama, um, wrote about color evasive racism. Um, and she uses the language of color evasive racism as a way to help us not be ableist in our language. So what people used to call colorblind racism, she is sort of reframed as color evasive racism. But when I hear him um, saying, you know, I don't, I don't believe in this, um, then that's what it reminds me of, right? It's, it's this thing that people are like, well, you know, I don't, I don't believe in, um, uh, you know, I don't believe in climate change, but, you know, then they want to start talking about how, you know, it's, it's warmer and, and things like that, right? Like you don't believe in it, but something is happening and, and you're discussing it. So how do you, I mean, it, it does exist, whether you agree with it or not is something different. Um, but I think it benefits people, some people to merely say, you know, this isn't a thing for me and I, and I don't need to participate in that. And you have the same, you all had the same opportunities that we had. And so why didn't you pull yourselves up by your bootstraps and yada, yada, yada. Is, is that the impetus behind wanting to get rid of the, any race talk, any race conversation, any race analysis? Because it's not just critical race theory. It seems to me that they don't want any race talk in school. Is it because they're trying to run from whiteness right. or they're trying to run from uh, the acknowledgement of race? What, what is it? Well, I think they're trying to 
run from a number of things. Um, they uh, People who are in opposition to what they think critical race theory is, um, which often, it, it's been fascinating to watch these conversations around banning critical race theory in schools, because I'm like, what exactly do you think that means? So when I teach my classes <laughs> at my institution, I put on my syllabus that I am a critical race theorist, that this class is oriented in critical race theory. And I'm teaching people who teach your children. So what you, you can't ban them because your districts need to hire teachers, right? But And you can't ban me because I am now a tenure professor at Loyola University, Maryland. So I'm not really yeah, sure. Yeah, talk what your ish, Dr. Way. Royal. She said, I got <laughs> tenure up in this thing. You can't do nothing with me. Sure. Now you just can't leave. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just not sure what, what it is they think they're doing, but I do think they're protecting themselves and their children from um, this sort of guilt that they want to run from and escape. Um, they don't want to take any responsibility. Everybody wants to have um, patriotism and talk about, you know, oh, the founding fathers, but they don't want to have the whole conversation about the founding fathers. You know what I mean? You can't pick up one side without picking up the other side. Right. So they don't want us to talk about uh, critical race theory. And they also want to ban Nicole Hannah Jones. And her project, the 1619 project, right? But you, but you want people to be patriotic. And what exactly do you do? You want them to be strengthened by that conversation is not supposed to have anything to do with race because we're supposed to be over that. I mean, it's really kind of um, it's it's delusional. Some of these arguments I'm seeing about banning critical race theory in schools. Nah, it, it, delusional is the right word for it. We're gonna have you back to talk more about these questions around race uh, and racial inequality in schools, not just the right that wants to ban critical race theory, but figuring out how we as a community of black people can come together to fix our schools or to reimagine our schools in ways that make black children a little more free. I want to appreciate, I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Royal, for coming on here, especially hanging out a little bit longer because of you, C.J. Pearson. See, if I wasn't a professional, I'd out chef for a But I wouldn't do that. Because I'm a professional. I'm just going to say, CJ, you done messed up now. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway, let us know what you're thinking. Hit us up.